An area that can get overlooked or not totally overlooked is the performance of your website. And on websquadron.co.uk, we've messed around with the homepage, added in a few more features and just changed out the layout. What I'm gonna go over is how can we ensure that the performance of the website, the Google Core Web Vitals, is still good, or at least still performing. You can actually see the score we've got at the moment for the mobile, 96. Yes, I would love 100, but I'll go with 96 as well. So we're gonna go over that right now and some of the changes we made and the plugins and the settings for that as well. Now, if you don't know me, I'm Imran Sadiq. I run websquadron.co.uk. We're here to help you with WordPress, Elementor, and how to build great performing websites to convert and to win business and to satisfy people as well. Don't forget, we've got Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and our own website. So please do follow us, okay? The links are in the description. Great. Right, so this website at the moment, we messed around with it, and I'll show you what we did. And the current score we're getting is 96. And if I just scroll down over here, that, that's pretty good. The largest content full pane is sometimes 1.2 seconds. Sometimes it's about 2.63 seconds. I don't worry about that too much. Because when I am assessing the website, in terms of opportunity, the only one is reduce the unused JavaScript. This relates to one of the plugins that I use, which is Auto Optimize, okay, which I'm going to go over. So I don't worry about that. The main thing is it is a score of 96. The point I do want to make though is that when I am scoring on my website, I don't just run it, take the score and run away. What I do is uh, on Page Speed Insights, I run it and I might have 10 other windows open in the background and I run one, run one, run, 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 run. Why am I running so many? Well, quite, oh, I just hit my headphones. What I basically do is the reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure there's consistency. So just because you get a high score, does it drop or do I consistently get a low score and then it peaks up because there is variation. I use SiteGround, shared server. I'm not on cloud. I'm not using a dedicated server. I'm using a shared server. So sometimes, depending on traffic in the day and server response time, it can dip. Sometimes it goes down to 70 and I kind of go, ah, oh, I hate that. But if I run loads of windows, it does pick back up again. So I always start to look at the average. And look, I just want to make a point. Okay, current score 96. Desktop is 100, yay, but mobile is 96. Look, 95, 94, ooh, there's a pattern here, 77. And then back up to 95, and I bet if I open another one, it might drop a bit or go back up. The highest it's ever been is 99. Believe it or not, last night I was hitting 99 for the mobile. And, I'm, and I was like, oh, why am I not getting it now? But that's just down to times of the server. But even if I go to the one that is 77, okay, and this is important, even when you get a low score, just go down and see what is it telling you. And the only opportunity again is the JavaScript for what optimize, okay? That's the main one. There are other stuff also it's gonna mention here, but these are bits and pieces here and there, but it's this main score here. And it's mainly gonna be the server response time that's hitting my score. So I'm not gonna lose major amounts of sleep over that. Page speed insights, and the advice they give you is pretty good stuff. Many times on the Facebook Elemental group, or just people generally contacting me, they will say, what do you think of our website? And people go on and they go, yeah, we like the website, the layout or whatever. I don't. The first thing I do, and this is for everyone out there who's watching, if you ever ask me to look at your website, the first thing I do is I will open Page Speed Insights. I will open about five windows, to be honest, okay? Like so and I will run your website through it. Because I wanna see what is your score and what is the advice being given down here? Is it telling, will I be told that your images need to be compressed? Is it gonna tell me they need to be in the next generation format, WebP? Is it gonna highlight that your web fonts or things aren't loaded or whatever? You know, on-screen images, whatever, things like that, okay? And if it is telling me that when I assess your website, rather than just saying, hey, yeah, your content looks great, your layout's brilliant, I love it. I'm gonna give you feedback on other areas of improvement for your performance. And yes, getting 100 on the desktop isn't that difficult. You can easily hit 98 to 100, really easily. It's the mobile which can be a little bit of a problem area. And I will focus on that because the last thing I wanna do is say to you, your website looks awesome. 
It's amazing. I love the way it looks, the motion effects, the sliders, the carousels, blah, blah, blah. Because I don't want you to go away thinking, great, I did everything perfect. No one is perfect. I'm not. None of us are. But if I can help you to understand your performance score and where you can improve on that, that helps you to learn and hopefully you can improve your website and you will take on those skills and that knowledge to your next website, to your next client, because you will eventually get to a point where you're just doing this like that. You don't even need to be told. You're just out, right out the back. You're doing it. Okay. So enough of that. Let's now go on to the actual website. So before we do that, let me just show you the settings for the plugins. Now, some of the key, key plugins I would definitely recommend is Ping2JPEG. And here's my settings for it, okay? After you've compressed an image, and yes, I know in WordPress 5.8, you can now load WebP images automatically. But if you don't want to go through all of those stages, what you can do is import into your media library, your PNG or your JPEG images after they've been compressed. Make sure you've compressed them, okay? Very important. This is where you then transform or convert them from a PNG to a JPEG because that can literally halve the size of your PNG even after it's been compressed, okay? That's important. The second thing I do is images to WebP. Here's my settings for it, okay? The PNG to JPEG, this one happens as I upload, okay? Well, actually it doesn't do it as I upload, sorry, no. What I do is you go in, you pick your images and you convert them. Don't convert transparent images, otherwise you lose the transparency, okay? You want to keep that. So after I've done that, I then go to images to WebP and I will then go over to convert existing images. I don't want this to do it automatically on upload, by the way. So I should have that on, no, I don't know why. I was messing around with the settings, sorry. So that should be do not convert automatically on upload, okay? You go to convert existing images and I will then tick upload. You can tick the other ones as well and I do go for EWW as well if it's present there and I just convert them, okay? So again, you're going from PNG, JPEG, already compressed, okay? Boop, shrink them down even more if it was a PNG to an even more sliced off JPEG and then boop, down even more to a WebP, okay? It's, trust me, it makes a difference. And if you get a message on your page speed insights about next generation, you know, images, don't sit there thinking, what? No, just get it done in WebP, all right? You will be fine. Okay, then we also have WP Fastest Cache. Not everyone uses this, not everyone likes it. It's free, so I just use it. Here's my settings for that. Take a screenshot, open up your own website. Tick, 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 tick. You get the idea. And then we have auto optimize again. Auto optimize. Uh, that's how you spell it. Don't put an S in. Uh, American spelling. Okay. And again, this is gonna basically optimize your website and loads of areas. So here's the settings for JavaScript. Okay. Look at what I've got here. You will see one in here that is js back forward slash jquery dot min. Get rid of that. I take that one out because I don't want to exclude that script. Okay. Those top three are ticked. For CSS, the top three are ticked. The bottom one here for inline all CSS. And down here, here's what I have for excluding because I because um, I don't need to go through it. There is going to be an option here called WP content forward slash uploads. I delete that one out. And when I say delete, I mean, I just literally click it and delete it out because I want that to go through the auto optimize because that's all your uploads. So you, you, you don't necessarily want to exclude those. Try it. Try it without excluding it and then exclude it and you'll see a difference. HTML, optimize HTML code. Yay, go for that. And then just make sure these are ticked at the bottom like so. Yep. So there's the settings that I go through there. Images. Um, this one varies. Sometimes I tick this, sometimes I don't. But the one I will do is I will say image lazy loading. Okay, so I do want to lazy load images, but don't do it until after the fourth image. Okay, and play around with this. You might only need to put the number one, two, three, or four in, or even six. What this means is I want images to lazy load. Okay, however, the first four images, I want them to be coming in quick. I don't want them to lazy load, and I'll tell you why. If they lazy load, it will cause a delay on when the largest content paint or image or something loads upon the screen. 
and it could also cause a cumulative shift on your page as well. So your page is loading and then the image, there's some text here, the image appears and then the text moves down. Cumulative layout shift. We don't really want to get that because it will affect your page speed score. So I say the first four images, do not lazy load. Throw them in quickly. Load them up. You know, we want to see them. Extra. By the way, critical CSS, you've got to pay for it. Um, uh, you know, you need to get a key for this, but I'm not fussed about that. Extra. I remove Google fonts and I will st stick on this point no matter how much people kick and shout and throw things at me. I remove Google fonts. Do it without removing Google fonts. Assess your score. Then remove Google fonts and assess your score again and you will be very surprised. Of course, though, it might mean that you've got to upload fonts to your website, maybe. Um, you know, uh, like Roboto or Lato or Montserrat or whatever you're doing, you might have to install them, but loads of them are free anyway, but it just stops a lot of gunk being loaded into your website and slowing things down. Okay, um, and then the last thing we, no, that's it actually, no, no, that's it. And save changes, and obviously you have the options at the top to auto-optimize. Let's just delete the cache there of 20 megabytes. Don't even know where that came from. And I'm gonna clear the cache for the WP fastest cache as well. Let's now go to the website. Let me just show you the changes we made, okay? Okay, so we're now viewing the website, um, and we changed the layout because we wanted to make it clear that we do courses and we have freebies and here's stuff we do and things you need to be thinking about, but that's not the focus of why you're here. What we, well, it is why you're here. But what I mean is, is we changed the layout a little bit with images in the background, and there's one of our images of one of the sites or test sites that we built as well. Okay, um, there's a video for how we built this one, by the way. So go and have a look in our videos if you want to see that one. Um, you know, text, we've got a bit of a motion effect going on here. So as you move up and down, we've got, it's basically a, a, a web, a couple of websites we built with testimonials. You can click if you want to, um, there you go. You can click if you want to visit those websites as well. So we're not hiding anything. Um, some further content, a little image of me, hello. Just a few more motion effects going on there with the rotate one, text button, da da da. Look, you know, testimonials again, all right? The main point I want to make across is that this is not just your simple website, you know, with text and an image. No, this is a little bit more than that. And we have got some motion effects going on. We have got a sticky header, logo, you know, da 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 da, da stuff like that going on, okay? And if I just shrink this screen down to be mobile view, which looks something like this, okay, we now have our logo, you know, we've got our menu like that, you know, we are drop downs, whatever. And then we have a slightly different layout. And the key thing I want to make you to you here, just scroll down and look at that. So, you know, we've got the layout, we've got things going on. Let me just expand on all of this again, like so, right is the key thing I want to mention though, is the image we got here, okay, in fact, let's just go to edit page. Edit with Elementor. I could have done this quicker. Should have had it set up, but it doesn't matter. So I have mentioned this in previous videos, okay? So when you get to this image here on the background, okay, we have a image. Look, there it is. Landscape image going all the way across, wonderful. However, when we go to the mobile view, okay, let me just make this, uh, let me just make it 400, just for the sake of it, okay? The image we have here, okay, is a different image. So that there is the image for the desktop, okay, you can see it. That there is the image for the mobile. All I did was add in a copy of this image, okay, right? And then I just went into edit image, like so, hit crop, and I cropped it to be 330 by 651, because that was roughly about the size I was kind of happy with. I could have made it 400 by 651. 400 probably would have been better. But what I'm telling you is that is by doing that, it means that I've now put in a smaller image because it doesn't need to be 1,350 pixels in width. It doesn't need to be 104 kilobytes in size. I mean, of course, we're not seeing the WebP size because you, you don't often see that on here, which I really wish WordPress would kind of change that so we can see the WebP size. But look, we did that. And by doing that, it just means now that on the website, we have 
images showing for the right resolution screen responsive mode. I'm not explaining myself very well, but I think you get what I'm saying, okay? Mo desktop has its image, mobile has its own image. And I'm not doing another section, okay? I haven't done a copy of a section and then hidden it from view. No, this is what we've done. And so we've got our website, we've done our plugins, and even though we have messed around with the layout, we've added on more. And again, you know, I hope you appreciate, this is not just a basic website with just text and an image. And that's it. No, there's a bit more going on here, okay? There are things happening on the page, okay? I haven't gone crazy with slider or carousels. I did have a carousel on here and the score was still 97, but I took it off because I didn't want it anymore. But the key thing is performance scores, okay? So 100, that's really good scores. You know, look at that. There's a little bit of cumulative shift and I cannot work out where the heck that is coming from at the moment. But we're still hitting 100. And on the mobile, we're not getting any. And like I said to you, right, there are times when you are going to get stuff like this crop up, 77, and you're going to go, <gasps> what? But just if you've run it a few times, and if you consistently get 60, 70 kind of thing, then I would go, hmm, something else is problematic here. I would probably revisit, like, the plugins, maybe, um, you know, for or to optimize with WP Fastest Cache, and just check, well, it's something not right there, but if they're okay, you know, it could literally be a server. And sometimes I will leave the website for half an hour or an hour, come back, test again, and the scores are all up again. So just bear that in mind as well, okay? So look, I, I hope you have found some of this useful in terms of some of the settings, in terms of um, how you can get a high score with Elementor, okay? And again, I'm not using WP Rocket. I'm not using Nitro Pack. I don't like to invest in premium plugins. I like to keep it simple because I'm thinking about what will most of you have access to. And if you haven't done already, make sure that in Elementor, sometimes when you do do changes, make sure you regenerate your files, make sure you sync your library, just click them, you know, tick, tick, take seconds to do. Make sure you go to your settings, all right? Go to experiments and make sure these are active. Optimize DOM output. That's about how things render. You know, if you haven't got it, if you haven't got that active, of course things will take longer to render, okay? Improve asset loading, improve CSS loading, accessibility improvements, and they're the only four I have activated at the moment because I don't need to worry about the others, okay? But take this all into account, and anyone out there who's gonna say, Elemental adds too much bloat, it's gonna slow your website down, you know, you know, I kind of say, whatever, because you can have a fast website. It's fast when I test it out on devices. It's fast when I got someone looking at it from across the world. Scores come out high. I haven't invested in any premium plugins. I'm happy. Like, subscribe, follow us, and we'll see you soon.